Why settle for one CDN provider when you can use multiple providers on your website? This is going to optimize your cost, improve performance, improve the reliability of your traffic, plus a whole lot more, all using IO River. So let me show you what I'm talking about right now. Welcome to my overview video of IO River. And I want to tell you that I'm actually blown away by IO River. Before this, I thought it was impossible to use multiple CDN providers on a website until I found IO River. Now, this is intended for sites that have a lot of traffic. And in return, you're going to have a ton of benefits like speed performance, like saving costs on CDN, because you're going to be able to decide what CDN provider you want to use based on regions or based on other situations that you want to use. Plus, you have the added benefit of using all these CDN providers and have a unified security system. Now, let's get started with my panel. Let's go ahead and jump over there. This is IO River, and I'm going to show you my CDN providers. Now, as of this video, these are the providers that they have available as of now, but they are adding more. Now, what's going to happen? You have several CDN providers. You're going to be able to add them here, and we're going to be able to use these on our website. Now, let's go ahead and check this out. We have services running right now in my demo site, and let me show you one of these. So let's go ahead and jump into this one. And right now, this one is using two CDN providers. One is using Cloudflare and the other one is using CloudFront. And you can see this is a balanced use of the CDN provider. So it's going 50, 50%. But you can actually decide if you want to use in a certain country, some type of CDN provider or a different one because you might be interested in speed performance or the cost. Maybe Cloudflare isn't as good in Latin America or Asia, but CloudFront is. So you want to use that over there. So it's kind of tricky but this is going to give you really speed performance on your website. So let's get started with the information. So first of all, we got our dashboard. You got your total requests, total bytes, and just give you the overall usage of IO River and the CDN providers that you're using. Then we have a view of our CDN providers that we're using in this particular system. You can see, select providers. I can add more here. And then I have my traffic policies. Remember I told you we can split this, we can do dynamic, we can do a lot of things. Let me show you some of these policies. So let me show you this one, which is a worldwide one. And this one is split 50-50%. So let me go ahead and show you this. We are using both of these. Let's go next. Now, this would be the steps to actually set this up. So if you want to do this, follow this step. So in this case, it's set to static. Let's go next. And then we have this option. So we got, would you like to enable failover? That means that if one fails over, it's going to use the other one, which is obviously a really good idea. Then you can select your monitor from here. It's using health for now. Let's go next. And then you can set your traffic weights. So in this case, it's at 50% to 50%, but you can actually do 70, 30%. Or if you're using more CDN providers, well, split those out. You might have your own reasons for doing this, but you have the option there, okay? And then you can apply the policy. And let me show you another policy. So let's go into add a policy. In this case, yes, I want to use these CDN providers. Let's go next. And this one is going to be cost-based. Like I said, maybe in certain regions, this is going to be less expensive than using the other one, the other provider. So this would be good reasons to use it. So for example, let's just say that, I don't know, Africa, Antarctica, <laughs> and Asia. Okay, so those are the ones we want to use. Let's go next. Do we want to use failover on this? Let's set it to no for now. Let's go next. You got your performance penalty. If you want to enable this, set the percentage and select the performance monitor for this. Let's go next for now. And then we want to set the CDN provider that we want to use for this. So for example, which one do we want to use first? So I'll set this one to first, and I'm going to apply the policy. In this case, I'm not going to set it up, but that's how you would do it. Let's go back into traffic policies. Here we go. Let's go add another policy. Again, let's select these two, and then we're going to use dynamic. So let's go into next and dynamic. Again, you got the option to select the countries, or we can go worldwide for this. Let's go next. We have the monitor that we want to select, for, for example, performance Dynamic, would you like to enable failover? Yes. So that means that if one fails over, this is the health monitor and we're going to apply it. So just like that, it's going to make the switch automatically in case there's a failure. So it's really good that we have this option there. Next, we have the domains. So the domains that you're going to connect, create domain mapping here. You got your origins. Again, you can create them from here. And then we have behaviors. So in behaviors, we can set things like the cache, the TTL, the browse cache based on behaviors. So for example, let me show you this one. For the static pattern here, you can set, for example, the action, the cache behavior, go ahead and cache, action type, the TTO for this, the action type, and the TTO. We can set our new behaviors from here, set a name and the path for it, and start setting it up. 
Then you have your monitor. So you got your monitor right here. There's a health and performance dynamic setup right here, but you can add more monitors from here, depending what you want to use for performance and ability. And then you can use these on your traffic policies. Okay. You got your ability and performance systems here. You can see here, we got the monitor and the performance monitor from here. So this is really great because we can actually monitor performance from here. For example, the performance for CloudFront, the performance from Cloudflare and IO River. See these graphs right here? So for example, we have the CloudFront performance here. So maybe that's not what we want to use, but maybe it's less expensive. We want to use it for certain countries, but we can be able to monitor the information right here. Now there's also cache management. So if you need to clear the cache, just go ahead and do it from here. So you can do it from inside of IO River. You got your security settings, so you can set up your WAF rules for your firewall. There's a lot of ways that you can take advantage of this to obviously improve the security on your website. There's also rate limiting, so you avoid hackers just trying to go all out on your site and trying to find a way to hack it. You got your monitoring for this. You got your events, traffic control, the origin sets, load balancers, which is also a really great option in case the site goes down, you have an option to use the load balancer, or in case you want to divide the load balancing of your servers, you can go ahead and use that. You got edge compute, logs, access logs, and a whole lot more. Let's set up a new one. Go ahead and set this new. And then you have the option, for example, the field. What do you want to use this to filter? So like what's, what's the action going to be? So in this case, it could be, for example, a URL. So for example, a specific URL or a path or a host, a client IP or a certain country. Let's do a country because that's going to be an easy one. But you can go ahead and use it by IP, by user agent, etc. Country. Let's just say that if it equals, I don't know, Mexico, which is where I am. Or, and if you want to make this a little bit more robust, we can do so. What's going to happen? What's the action? So if someone is going to visit from Mexico, we can go ahead and allow log block or bypass manage rules with this action. So it gives us the option to use our firewall straight from here. Then you can set up rate limiting, which is always a good idea. Bots don't rest. They always want to hack your site. So definitely set a rate limiting, especially for your sections that are important for your login. As link, etc. You want to set that rate limiting. So basically, you can set it by, for example, the URL path or the URL exact. If it equals, and you can set the URL, for example, I don't know, login.com at login, and it's going to be like that. You can set the number of requests. You can say 10 requests in the time window, I don't know, 10 seconds. Then it's going to do what we're going to block, or you can log for what duration. So we're going to say for 60 minutes. So that means one hour. So if that's what, how rate limiting works. So it's a great option to have it right here. Then we have the monitoring for this. You got your events, set up the events here, origin set, load balancers, which is always a great idea to set up a load balancer. You got your edge compute, your logs, access logs, and request logs. Everything inside of here uh, with IO River. So I definitely say I'm blown away with the capabilities that you can do with IO River. And if you have a site that has a lot of traffic, I definitely recommend that you use IO River because it could be based on cost because you want to set this up, the CDN providers based on cost or maybe on performance. You want the best performance on different types of sections of the world or different situations, and you're going to use it based on that performance. So that is IO River. If you want to check it out, the link we provided in the description. And that's a wrap.